really honored to have the orthopedic surgeon and managing partner of the Stedman Clinic, the co-chairman and co-director of Sports Medicine Fellowship with the Stedman Philippone Research Institute in Vail, Colorado, the supporter and leader of this fourth injury symposium. Mark is known as one of the world's leading, I'm gonna change that, I have editorial control, is known as the world's leading orthopedic hip surgeon. Recognized by his peers in US history and news and world report for being one of the top 1% in the nation is in, in, in his specialty. I just wanna drop the mic on that one alone. Um, as mentioned, he and his wife, Sanin, are trustees with the US Olympic and Paralympic Foundation and launched the Sports Medicine Fund with the foundation that allows us to strategically identify opportunities to advance sports medicine for Olympic and Paralympic hopefuls. My honor to introduce to kick off the next session, Dr. Mark Philippon. Hi, this is Mark Philippon. <clears throat> My assignment is uh, to talk to you about hip screening to identify the hip at risk. These are my disclosures. Now and later, hip injuries in the athlete. There's been a trend in hip arthroscopy procedures over the past few years. They have increased drastically over the past 20 years. Femoroacetabular impingement, becoming known as FAI, describe an anatomical bony abnormality of the femur or the acetabulum creating a conflict, especially with motion. While the prevalence of FAI varies widely throughout the literature, 5 to 75 percent, elite athletes are more likely to develop the deformities. The condition predisposes individuals to both acute and chronic injuries, pain and labral tear in the short term, chondral defects, and osteoarthritis in the long term. FAI can be isolated as a cam impingement, a pincer impingement, or a mix impingement. The cam refers to the head and neck junction deformity, the pincer over the acetabular deformity, and most of our patients usually are mixed type of deformity. You can see in this uh, video what happens when you have a cam impingement. The convexity at the head and neck junction cause excessive pressure at the contralabral junction causing a separation. The larger the cam, the more stress at the contralabral junction. And over time, the cartilage really starts delaminating and that can lead to grade four lesion. The red zones show you the area at stress in a cam impingement deformity. Pincer impingement refer to the impingement on the acetabulum. As you can see here, the premature conflict occurs where the neck pinch the labrum and often the stress induced by repetitive motion can cause pressure also in the posterior inferior portion of the acetabulum as you can see here and that can lead to what we call a contracru lesion. The type of injury to the cartilage is different in a pincer type. It's more rim chondrosis and you can see here on this picture the uh, red zones show the posterior inferior lesion le uh, that's related to the contracru lesion. So the etiology of the FAI are not truly well understood, making primary prevention difficult. Can develop in skeletally immature patients, possibly due to extreme stress on the growth plate. Longitudinal st uh, course studies have suggested that certain movement contribute to the development of FAI deformity. There's also an association between training intensity and FAI, and further research is certainly needed in primary prevention, pathogens of the disease, and met methods of preventing the deformity. So prevalent, this is a paper published in AJSM where we looked at 
prevalence of increased alpha angle in youth ice hockey player. And we found that there was an increased risk of FAI in hockey players compared to skiers. And also what we found is that the prevalence of uh, hockey players' cam deformity appears to be increasing with age. High risk motion. If we look at these videos here, you can see a baseball player in rotation, bigger skater, and obviously trauma. All these can lead to uh, serious damage to the hip if there's an underlying uh, bony impingement. So the research is focusing on single prevention, De determining at-risk population, identifying at-risk hips, and managing at-risk hips. <clears throat> so it's common in many sports. Certain sports have certainly more hip injuries or are what we call hip at risk. Ice hockey, golf, ballet, baseball, martial arts, and many others. You can see here a person who's a Taekwondo athlete. You can see on the modeling there how much load there is in hyperabduction and rotation in that sport. If we look at the uh, hip moment in various sport, walking, taekwondo, uh, football player, quarterback, baseball player, batter, PJ golfer, you can see that as I just showed that taekwondo appears to have higher hip moment forces. Also, if we look at the lateral to medial forces, you can see the same pattern. So, what are the criteria for screening? This is from the uh, <clears throat> criteria from the World Health Organization. The condition being screened is an important health problem. And we know that hip injuries untreated in active people with motion at risk can certainly lead to damage the cartilage. So hip arthroscopy increased eightfold between 1999 and 2009. 60% of the athletes in cutting preventing sports develop hip osteoarthritis. There's certainly a detectable early stage and silent FAI can lead to damage. So it's very important to have some type of screening process, especially in sports at risk like ice hockey. So early treatment is certainly better than later treatment <clears throat> and it's suitable test to detect at an early age. These are criteria that meets the World Health Organization. So for us, we like to use the Faber distance test, the impingement test anterior and posterior, and the uh, rotation range of motion uh, measurement. Usually in FAI, we'll have decrease into rotation. These are example of anterior and posterior impingement tests, how it is performed. The Faber distance, you can see here, it's positive on the left on this patient, uh, and we consider it positive if there's a, a difference in the distance of uh, greater than four centimeters between the affected and the unaffected leg. Now, sometime you'll have patient about issues. Uh, this will be taken into consideration. Femoral torsion also has to be taken into consideration for this test. So, hip range of motion, supine flexion, abduction, adduction, prone extension, rotation, hip strain, lug roll test, pelvic tilt observation, and Trendelenburg gait assessment. This is an example of the lug roll test before surgery, and then you'll see the next uh, movement there after correction with capsule application. Each port is different. I think it's important to understand the motion at risk. MRI screening, uh, oblique axial view, uh, data uh, collected that we like is the alpha angle, labral pathology, and femoral version. So, uh, we're trying to make the screening process portable. So ultrasound uh, is a good tool uh, also to, to use for screening. 
pre-participation screening in elite youth tennis players. We uh, work uh, in, in Spain with uh, uh, the Fondación uh, Rafa Nadal and Clinic Mafre with Dr. Cotoro, and we really uh, looked at that sport specifically in Barcelona as a, a great academy to, to follow that. And what we found is that we look at 148 tennis players from that tennis academy. There was no difference in the age tournament play per year or weeks when comparing with players with hip at risk to no at risk. And subject with hip at risk had played tennis longer than nine and a half years compared to those without risk. The pre-participation um, screening also in, in the weightlifter. Uh, 85 elite weightlifter uh, were looked at. The average year of competition was 10.6. 70% 70 of the athletes at FIA level pathology. Athletes with CAM were older. And female weightlifter were more likely to have a CAM, different than the other sports. And uh, weightlifter with CAM were uh, 9.5 times more likely to have a labeled tear. So, asymptomatic screening certainly contributes to our understanding of the pathogens of FAI. We have to identify the risk factors. Uh, we want to detect a disease in an individual without symptom of that disease. We're not predicting injury, we're identifying the at risk hip. Through education and change in training, we can manage the at risk hip and delay and prevent further damage. It's important uh, to understand the importance of uh, secondary prevention, duration of symptom, predict the outcome. Pain less than two years versus pain within two years, you can see here uh, the difference in the uh, outcome. Return to play in Karen Link in hockey, we look at uh, return to play 28 males. What we found in that study at GSM is that uh, the longer they played with their symptoms, uh, the more damage they had to their cartilage. Also, return to play was longer for those who had symptoms for a longer period of time. We also look at carrier length. We look at 60 male professional hockey players. We found that uh, those who had duration of symptoms uh, between players that played greater than five years and those who did not, 9.3 months versus 20.2 months. Sports test is also a test I like to use. Uh, before returning the patient to training. The uh, new research on injury prevention and healing, uh, we uh, look at personalized healthy aging program, prior surgery and biological treatment, such as synolytic agents, uh, clinical trials with Fiacid and Losartan uh, to improve bone marrow aspirate concentrate. Uh, we will get uh, funding from the NIH. And then, uh, we are looking at uh, phase one, two clinical trial, randomized two by two factorial design. And uh, what's important also is the FDA has approved the investigation of the new drug uh, application for Fisetin. So this is a very exciting uh, project and we're hoping to uh, prove our hypothesis. In conclusion, uh, studies are currently on their way to provide a better understanding of the etiology of FAI. It's necessary to improve primary prevention. Different sports show different factors with FAI. We can identify that risk population and at risk individual using epidemiological studies. And proper management of at risk individual can improve outcome and increase carrier longevity. Uh, I think it's important to identify these patient at risk and modify the training if indicated. And really, provide them with an option of early intervention if indicated to prevent uh, 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 cartilage damage uh, that often can lead to grade 4 lesions. Thank you very much and um, thank you for your attention.